He said to give you an expected and the end you wish for. Now, I want you to understand the key, the key to that scripture. He didn't say I. He didn't say if. You know, there are, course, there are other person of scripture where God will, God, God will, God will be really direct about things. He tell you, okay, exactly, this is what I want for you. But he said, yeah, this is what I wish. Hallelujah. If I wish for my son to graduate and the son did not apply himself, what happened? He will end up graduating, right? My wish is for him to graduate. But if that's not what he or she is wishing, or what my son or that is wishing for himself, Hallelujah. He will not end up graduating. It will only be my wish. Hallelujah. So God wish for everyone to what? I want you to understand it's a wish. So for you to enter into your when I talk about prosperity, I'm not talking about money. You know, some people wish when we talk about prosperity, when prosperity they focus too much on money. Money is only 30% of prosperity. You can still have a million dollars and still be sick. Are you with me? You can still have a billion dollars and still your home is not the way it's supposed to be. Prosperity has something to do with every aspect of your life. Your health, your wealth, your emotion, your your your, your investment, everything. That belongs or pertains to you. Even your family. In fact, the scripture says in the book of John, Bible says, God will save you. God will save the island of innocence because of the pureness of your hand. In other words, because of your, your status in God, because you work with God, God will protect your family. Why? Because of your. I know a lot of people say that your righteousness has been there. I understand. That's not the old covenant. Hallelujah. But now, in the new covenant, the righteousness you have is not your own righteousness. It's righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Of, of Jesus Christ. So, when God looks at you, as you are, all of us know that He did not see you, you see Jesus. Are you with me? He said, I know the thought I think towards you. A part of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. And he began to say, He said, The reason I want you to prosper, the reason I want you to, 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 to be whole in every aspect of your life, he said, Because you will be able, you will be able to pray well. He said, And when you pray, are you listening to me? See what he said there? In other words, when you begin to experience God in every aspect of your life, then you'll be able to pray confidently. Are you with me here? So, if when God, if your life is not the way it's supposed to be, God is not happy. I want to ask you to you today if you don't know that. But I profess upon your life, I did not agree. I said today Jehovah locates you. Amen. I said the God of the Bible locates you. Amen. I said the God of the New Testament locates you. Amen. If you are the one I'm talking to, shout a living amen. 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 God ate witches because witches suck the life out of people. 
Exodus 22 verse 18, he said, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to thee. Now, let me talk about which people only focus on people that eat people's flesh. Yeah, those are a big part of which. But the Bible says that stubbornness is as what? As of witchcraft. So a man that have the, that that have chronic stubbornness in which. Praise. Praise God. So if a person is stubborn, if a person that if they're talking to a person that has been advised several times to not to do something, he or she, the person he or she is doing it repeatedly without knowing what that person is a bitch. I prophesy upon your life. Any trait of witchcraft in your family, I say that the fire of God burn it. The fire of God burn it. The fire of God burn it. Jesus. Amen. I have a revelation yesterday that, that, that baffles me. You know, I pray. I, I, I when I pray, I call if I know your name, I call everybody when I pray. I'll be for something personal. Got so many graphic pictures which I'm not I'm not I'm not comfortable to to, to describe. But let me just put it like this. I saw in a vision that a person, you know, I had this one say, oh, a person. Where the enemy have tied the individual, they tie him like a cattle. You understand? And I saw the life have been sucked out of this individual. And he said he and they was done. In the vision, I was living around and I said, God, I give life into that. I give life. You know, don't pray this prayer. You don't pray this prayer. You know, I want you to think of I was, you know, there's something that I see sometimes makes me angry in the spirit. Lift up your hand. There's somebody, somebody, somebody here today, like somebody here right now, that 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 your life financially, it seems like the life out of your finances have been sucked out. The life in your finances have been sucked out. Hallelujah. Like I don't know how to describe it. I this was vivid. It was very graphic. I saw. So. Hallelujah. Just like the young you remember like what the, the book. The, the book of Genesis, when, when Pharaoh dreamed the dream, he saw the um the cattle. Some of the cattle that, that was that was found. I mean some of them that was killed. And it was something like that I saw. You're gonna put this person. Say my father, my God. My, my father, father, my God. God. Anywhere the devil has sucked the life out of my stuff. Anywhere, Anywhere the devil has sucked the life out of my stuff. As I pray now. As I pray now. I breathe the life of God into it. 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 I breathe the life of God into it.
Are you listening to me here? Now, God is looking for man. When I speak of man, I'm not talking about gender here. God is looking for a person, an individual who say, Lord, I make myself available that you pour your oil upon me. Now, now people try to speak grammar. It's not that that for grammar. It's the time for action. Lift up your hand. See, my son, I'm a maker. As I begin to pray, as I begin to pray,
of his resurrection. Are you listening to me? Now we said last week that 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 that, 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 that one qualification, that one about uh, what requirements you need to have amongst many for you to experience the next level. We said that if you must experience the next level, you must be, you must do what? You must be dissatisfied with your present level. Are you listening to me? I want, I want to first of all, I want to first of all analyze that for, for, a few sec- for a few minutes here. Praise God. I said last week that the enemy of your next level is your current status. I have I have met of God say I remember in those days when I used to pray for the sick. I remember in those days. Even even then, even when you even when you look at life also, you can experience people experience, you can experience that also in peace, in your natural life. That people sometimes I used to be somebody else that today are nobody. And they still live with on the glory of the past. But I want to announce to you that God is not the God of the past, it's God of the present and future. Hallelujah. He said, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. I, I want I want to I dare to tell you today that that scripture is talking about the rapture. Yes, but that scripture can only be also be applied to the next level that God is taking the church to. I came to trust and not to look at your beautiful face. I came to Tulsa by the grace of God to introduce Jesus Christ once again to Tulsa. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, now you must, you must be, you must be, Tulsa, uh, you must be radical to be classical. Hallelujah. If you must make a mark, you must go where no one has gone before. I was to go in the cold where no one has gone before. Hallelujah. <laughs> Complacency is what has destroyed the church. Especially in the Western world. If you look at today, they, they talk about what, what the great men of God used to do in the past. They forget that God you know, is not interested in your past. If God was interested in your past, then a lot of us would not be Christian. Are you with me? Tap your neighbor, say the next level. The next level. Tap your neighbor, say the next level. The next level. Tap your neighbor, say the next level. The next level. Now we say, we said last week that God cannot be understood, right? As I said before, He can only be, you can only catch God. You can only be able to decode God through revelation. And only when revelation is there, God has to reveal Himself to you. Jesus said, He said, He that believe me, I am my Father. We come to Him. And we manifest ourselves to him. I stand to prophesy over some people here. By the power of the Holy Ghost, by the end of this service, I see you catching revelation. Amen. I see you catching revelation. Amen. I see you catching revelation. Amen. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. It's the same today. It's the same yesterday. It's the same forever. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. The man is on your side. The man is on your side. said last week that hunger speaks of food. First speaks of what? Water. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. So if you are thirsty for God, you'll be filled, you'll be filled, you'll be filled with God. Hallelujah. We said last week that you can only be filled with what you are what? Hunger for. Eh, Gila Gubo.
next level. I am ready for the next level. We said last week also that, 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 that because God cannot be seen with your eyes, because we cannot tell I, I see God, you can't recognize God with your physical eyes to revelation. But I want to announce to you also to take it one step further. You can only understand God to apply revelation. <laughs> Knowledge is not power. Let me pause for a second. Let, let that sink in your mind. Knowledge is not power. I know not that you get the people that don't have no power. Ah, knowledge is not power. The application of knowledge, that's what creates power. Amen. Let me explain. You can have a loaded gun in your house, and a man come with a gun, point the gun in your head, and the gun is in your pocket. If the guy turns his back, if you don't realize that you have a gun, if you, realize, if you don't realize you have a gun, you can pull it out and also point it at the person. You don't be sitting there begging the person for your life. Am I right there? Yes, sir. It's a loaded gun. It's, you have license or it is loaded. Praise God. It's the same thing also with knowledge that is not applied. Or evaluation that is not applied. Many of them say, Pastor, I see a lot of men of us say, Pastor, I've seen God. Oh, hallelujah. I went to bed, I dreamed. I had the revelation. I've been having revelation for a long time. I see Jesus who walked to me and told me to start a church. You want to find confused people on the church? So confused. <laughs> Praise God. The church has so much power, we don't know what to do with it. Hallelujah. We have so much power. But the church has become powerless. Are you with me? You see in a church a man have cancer instead of the pastor going and pastor praying so that the cancer go and say that they should pray so that town they will do chemotherapy so that the cancer will leave. What are you doing? I do pastor. Too lazy. Are you with me here? Now, now you must understand that God is ready. Knowledge is not power. Let's go to the Bible. 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 let us go I have seen cancer disappear. I, when I was coming, I'm still coming up with the faith. I was living in a place called St. Max Place. There's this lady that used to live down uh, um, underneath me. Hallelujah. She's, she's still living in New York. She's, she's cancer free now. She came to me one time. I was I was going to do some fasting. You know. So I said to her, I said, Pastor, I have just been diagnosed with cancer. I said, pray for me. And that I was not even ordained yet. So I told her, you know, faith is important. I told her, I said, I believe that God can heal you. She said, yes. And I wrote the scripture. She said, if there are any family in there, they send a physician there. But I'm going to sit down with her. I said, stop with this word. I gave it to her. And I left. And two weeks after, she went back to the doctor. The doctor says, her cancer is coming to a vision. Are you listening? Now, God is, God is ready to lose people. But only is not finding available people. I prophesy upon your life. I say you make the difference in this generation. Amen. I say you make the difference in this generation. Amen. I say people will look up to you, they will not look down on you. Amen. I say people will look up to you, they will not look down on you. Amen. I say the one I'm talking to shall live in the name. Amen. Have your neighbor say, get ready for the next level. Get ready for the next level. Come, please. I was talking to I was talking to Mr. Maria, hallelujah. Uh, uh, Pastor um, Pastor um, Clement's wife, hallelujah. We are having some discussion. I I I under I, I got to understand something about that. I love people that love God. My best friends are believers. If you are a believer, your best friend is an unbeliever, then I question the Christianity. I'm sorry to say that, but I question your Christianity. If your best friend is an unbeliever. I used to have a best friend that was an unbeliever, you know what I told him? I say, you don't believe that you can come in and see one your business. You don't get my rent, you don't feed me. <laughs> I told him, I said, if in order for this friendship to go further, you have to choose. You can be my friend, but you can't be my best friend anymore. I'm not saying you should not be friends with a believer. I'm saying you're best friend. Hallelujah. A 
man or woman that knows whether he or she is born, they understand the kind of friend they want to hang around with. I'm going to the top most of them. So I'm not that any small thing impede my progress. See, bats of the, the, the I say, English Bible is in what? Bats of the same feather rise together. Trust me. If you say, I, I do not believe that this person, I do not, I do not, I do not curse, but it's my friend, he curse a lot. Trust me, my sister, my brother. One day, it's not just me. I've been there before. If your friend is a curser, whether you like it or not, one day you start cursing. Why? Because you have been around that person is, is actually impacting your life. Are you here? Now, I'm not saying that you should follow what I'm teaching. I'm saying what I can do. What? Say he that has, he has to. You are letting what? Let him what? Let him what? Yeah. Uh-huh. Let him hear. Talk to your neighbor. Say, I'm ready for the next level. I'm ready for the next level. Now, one of the greatest roadblocks roadblock about to the next level is S I N, three letter word. What does spell? C. And it, the reason why people are, I was talking to them, you know, the reason why a lot of people are praying for the Viper today, they are not seeing the Viper in their life or in ministry. Why? Because of some of our, some of us, us, some of us still live in it. Hallelujah. Some ministers are still living in it. And I say, you now really find your pastor. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you have when you have like when you have people that are loaded with sin in one room, they pray for revival. What is going to happen? Revival comes from a pure place. Hallelujah. Elisha could call, could lock up the heaven. Why? Because his mind was good. The byproduct of sin is greed. Lots of people want to, lot of many, lot of men of God want to. Who want the revival because they want to gain glory out of it? I'm, I'm telling you now, this is what I learned from the Holy Spirit that the reason why some of these people are praying for revival, some of it's not happening to some people. I, I can assure you that revival is, is going on right now as we speak. Hallelujah. But many people are not expressing revival because they, they live in sin. They, 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 people are too, if you look at this, people, one of my friends, I was talking to one of my friends yesterday. He said something that really, really shocked me. Oh, God bless you. Hallelujah. I still love you. But one of the reasons why many, many of us not experiencing a viper in our lives because most of us are still living in it. When I speak of sin, I'm not talking about committing fornication and adultery and sleeping with nothing. Greed. Selfishness. Hallelujah. Jealousy. These are all sins. Sins of the flesh. I prophesy upon your life. I say, God deliver you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say, God deliver you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say, God deliver you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. God deliver you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in in the book of Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6, so we are all infected and impure with sin. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 say, He that covered the sin shall not prosper. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 15, said, Then I return to my place until they admit their guilt and turn to me. That was me. God said, I want to. He was speaking to Isaiah. I want to really bless these people. I want to be amongst them because I will not. I will return to my place until they get rid of what they have. God could not go to the people of Israel. I understand me. I will say, Grace has been preached, over preached, 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 said, Oh. Oh, your righteousness in God, if you even if she has your forgiveness. But what Romans have the that one? Shall we continue sin to get me about? If you insult your wife, you're a sinner. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I say if you insult your wife, you're a sinner. Yes, sir. You must repent. Are you listening to me? There are, there are some small things that people do sometimes. They think that, oh, God will forgive me. One of these I'm going to teach about the benefit of benefit of our record. Benefit of serving God. You understand? Some of us are going to understand really that some of the things we do is not right. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Praise God. I want to take you to heaven. Amen. I believe in grace. I believe we are saved by grace. I believe in grace with responsibility. 
you have freedom as an American citizen. But if you go and shoot somebody, will the police leave you say because you have freedom to do what you want to do? No. Your freedom is, they not give, your freedom do not give you the right to infringe on the freedom of another person. Are you with me? Grace is not a license to sin. Grace is a license to live above sin. Are you with me? This is what? The license to live above sin. Bible say either, either, it say that either, either, either is born of God of our coins the world. This is, he said, this is, he said, even our what? Our faith. That is born of God that comes to world. Are you in here? So if you are, if you are, if you are two believers, if you believe in Jesus Christ, sin is not in your nature. Hallelujah. God said to me something in the profound one time. He said that he said that son says sin stings. It causes someone to sin. I have seen with my serving God this shot up. I God have been saved for over many 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 years. I've been in ministry for over 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 a decade and so on. And someone. Amen. I have seen we are we are people in the altar. I'm sorry to say it now. Amen. Some of you may not like what I'm saying. But this is a fact, right? I've seen people, we are people in the altar messing up left and right. And they come start stretching their sin to land on me. Say, God forgive, for, God forgive us. Yeah, God forgive. He forgive you that one day he struck you down in that altar you preach. Hallelujah. The reason why many people are not experiencing the next level, why? Because some things that they are doing is and becoming to God. God does not like this. Hallelujah. He said, Blessed are those that are hunger and thirst for righteous invitation. Next one, next one, as a believer, you must experience the next level, you must kill the appetite of things. Now let me talk about, let me just let me just say that about you. I'm not saying that you should not you should not dress. I'm not saying that you should not buy nice things. I love I love I love flash cars. I love fancy cars. There is nothing wrong with that. Amen. I'm, I'm I'm saying that you should not be your attachment. You go to a point that things should not have no value. I'm not just saying it because I have a lot. That God says I'm rich. Amen. You understand that one? <laughs> I am very rich. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but there's one thing I've discovered I started from God's servant, which I've, I've analyzed very much. I don't have value for this. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> one of the key for you to explain the next level you must be value things. Things will have no value to Because I believe whatever you cannot let go, that thing has control over your life. Are you with me here? So kill your appetite. Number, number three. Point number three. Hallelujah. Point number three. I have about ten minutes. Point number three. Number three. Number three. Uh, requirement for you to experience the next level is your love for God. <laughs> now, if I say this now, your love for God. Many of you tell me, Pastor, I love God. Yes. Let me check. Let, let me just analyze that for a second. You love God. Amen. You love God. Praise God. You love God, right? I believe you love God. I believe all of you guys are love God. That's why you're here. Praise God. But there's another level of love for God that causes you to, to forsake everything you have to follow God. God was speaking to Peter in John the last chapter. He said, Love and me more than this. He said, Feed my sheep. Jesus said to Peter, the third time Peter was really angry. He said, Lord, he said, No, he said, No, that I love you. He said, Too much. And God begins to extend the happy that we die. He said, When thou was young, thou goest wherever you will. He said, But now, when that thou become old, see, you start for thy land and another thing. Have you ever seen old people? When they're really, really old, they cannot help themselves. You see, other people are holding them to lead them anyway. And you're the person take them, that's where they go. That's when you have become, when you have viewed yourself in the Holy Ghost. That you don't have your own will. That everything that you do, you do it by the being of God. You're not, you're not. In your speech pattern has changed, and everything about you is 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 is, is, in, con- is in conformity to the Holy Spirit. Romans eight, I think verse twelve or verse fourteen. He said, "He said as many as are led by the Spirit of God." That's what I'm saying. He said, he said, "As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what the sons of God." So sonship does not it not talk about your position there. Hallelujah. You can have a position in the natural, but you have no position in God. 
Hallelujah. Hey, do you understand? There are some people that are sitting in the pew that are more anointed than the pastor that preached. It's the truth. I, 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 I'm not trying to deceive anybody on TV. One that's with I've, I've sat down and listened to Metal Man about it. They have no message. <laughs> this person has so many people. What is he preaching? Hallelujah. It is the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, what are the qualifications to experience the next level? Whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your ministry, whether it's in your, in your marriage, is going to love God above all else. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. He said, In the last days, Felicia shall be done to come. Say, Men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Then he began to describe the quality of those that love things, love the world more than the love of God. He said, They will be what pride. They will be pride. They said, They will be headstrong, hard high minded. He said, That's fire. This is what really intrigued me. That's why I say, Having the form of God. <laughs> But denying the power of God, I was I was in New York one time preaching at the World Trade Center. I went to the bookstore because I love the Bible, I love to read. I went to the bookstore and I met some Christians. Really, if you look at the guy, they're really zealous. They said, We don't believe that Jesus died. You might not believe this one because you've never experienced that before. And they begin to narrate all kinds of stuff. I'm like, whoa, I'm, I, I have never seen that before. And my mouth was open. There's a man right now in England that not believe in the resurrection. He's a priest. He preach. He could go to his church. Hallelujah. So, Mr. Mayor, when people say they love God sometimes, I ask them, what have you sacrificed? What have you paid for the cross of God? What have left your life because you love God? You think that because you come to church every Sunday, that means you love God. I want to break it to you that the devil goes to church every Sunday. Yes. Huh? He goes to church. He dresses you that you want to listen to someone. But it doesn't mean that you want to apply it. Amen. Who are Christians? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to next I'm not all of you guys, you're all born again. I believe you are Christians. But who are Christians? Christians are those that do the will of God. It's not Christian by mouth, it's Christian by action. As I told you, this whole month I'll provoke your anointing, the anointing inside of you to do something. Hallelujah. I came to provoke you. Positively provoke and awake the lightness of the land in you. Hallelujah. Because the level you are in, you should not be, you should not be sad. No, not when you write your exam saying satisfactory. No. You should say excellent. Amen. Because there's an excellent spirit that lives inside of you. That you have that you have let us be like dormant for a long time. It stands for the lioness of lying you to awake. But they say, away from that slumber and Christ will shine on you. I speak to your life by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the end of this service of the day, I said that tiger, the lion in you will awake. Yeah. I said the lion in you will awake. Yeah. I said the lion in you will awake. Yeah. Say for the time to favor has come. Yet the set time has come. Now, when we go that scripture, that's why many of us are we don't go for the people. But it, it began to speak of the reason why God will arise and have mercy. Say because thy servant take pleasure in the prosperity of Zion. He said, and favor the dust thereof. Say because of that, the time to favor you have come. In other words, the servant of God loves the work of God. He loves the things of God. He loves to see God, the people of God progress. He loves to see the house of God in order. Because of that, that to favor our pastor. I speak to your life by the power of the Holy Ghost. I say your time of favor has come in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say God will favor you. 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 Amen. 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 Amen.
Every chain of limitation is broken. Amen. Every chain of limitation is broken. Amen. Every chain of limitation is broken. Amen. Every chain of limitation is broken. Amen. Every chain of limitation is broken. Amen. I see God turning your disappointment to appointment. Amen. I see God turning your scars to scars. Amen. I see God turning your scars to scars. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Everywhere you have gone before that you have rejected. As from the deck, as you go there, I see acceptance. Amen. I see acceptance. Amen. I see acceptance. Amen. Every mark that you carry, that I make life tough for you. But the anointing upon you shall be today. By the grace of God, let's look upon this commission. I say that mark is completely erased. Amen. It is completely erased. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I want to pray with you quickly. I want to pray with you. Hallelujah. The moderator is saying my time is up. Hallelujah. Let me pray with you, man of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I give you praise. I give you glory, God. Lord, I pray for divine visitation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, as your servant, I cry for a visitation. I pray for visitation. Amen. What do you want God to do for you, sir? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the visitation, Lord. Amen. Divine visitation. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Locate him by your power, by your grace. Everything you have deposited in him, Lord, let it be realized. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let him manifest to his world. Amen. Let him manifest to his world. Amen. Let him manifest his work. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The last one I want to make up this time now. Faith is another requirement for the next step. Hallelujah. Faith. Hallelujah. It's another requirement to work for the next level. If prayer is the breath of the faith of Christianity, then faith is the blood of Christianity. Bible says, without faith it's impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is. And he is a word of all those that diligently seek him. I want you to lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of you, if you don't, if you're not careful, you're going to miss what God is doing. Hallelujah. I always tell people that when, when I'm out there, I'm, I'm a person. When I stand here, Amen. I'm a very different, completely different person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're not, if you're not here, you miss God. Hallelujah. I pray that you not miss God in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say I pray that you not miss God in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Lift up your hand and begin to speak. What do you want God to do for you? Hallelujah. What you want God to do for you in this? Because I believe some of that, some of you got to enter into new realms. Hallelujah. Some of you have already started having dreams, strange dreams. Hallelujah. Some of you, God is God is going to walk it. God is going to walk into your dream. Allah is going to be to dive into do some sacrifice. I mean, some of you there are some there are some there are some strange strange decisions you're going to make. Allah, that you may not understand. Allah, that is going to change your, the entire trajectory of your life of good. Allah, I see I, I see God God opening doors for people. Here. Amen. Doors. I see God opening marital doors. I see God opening financial doors. I see God opening ministerial doors. Hallelujah. I see God doing great things in the life of God's people. Amen. If I stand before you, I make sure I pray well before I come here. Hallelujah. What I'm saying, I'm saying prophetically. Hallelujah. That you not remain in the same place you were before. Amen. After the service, you change the level. Amen. After the service, you change the level. Amen. When your mother begin to cry out to God, with all your heart, I give you the next few minutes. Cry out to Jehovah. Before you cry out to God in the name of Jesus. Cry out to Him in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and cry out to God in Jesus' name. Crowd of a father, Nabado, she made it. Man, did it. I know where I be, young girl. I know where I be, young girl. We cry on my father. I know where I be, 